Hi, my name is Kagan Whitbold. I'm a customer success manager with Traction. Part of what my job here is, is to make sure that our customers see value from our solution. One of the things that sets us apart from a lot of other vendors in the space is the fact that you get a dedicated vibration analyst to help you with your problems like myself. What my job is, is as a Cat2 vibration analyst, is to help our customers understand the insights that we send them and how they need to best take action to rectify any problems. Part of the objective with these videos is to show what that process looks like with real customers. Let's dive right into our first example with one of our food manufacturing clients out of Indianapolis. We actually issued an insight for looseness nine days after we installed our sensors at their facility. Looseness in this case is an example of a prescriptive insight where it is the potential failure mode of an asset, right? So looseness, if you think about a motor, you have four bolts that keep that motor secured to its base. An example of this would be if you had a bolt that was missing or loose, that wasn't secured all the way to the base, that allowed that motor to rock back and forth as it's rotating, bouncing against the base. Or let's say that there is some play between a shaft and a bearing and there's some looseness that allows it to rattle around in that bearing race. These are some examples of looseness and the failure modes that can precipitate from that kind of failure. In this case, we issued uh, an insight on May 13th, nine days, like I mentioned, after we installed our sensors. We actually identified a high one times running speed peak, which is shown here in this analytics sample. What this means is, as a CAT2 vibration analyst, we're looking for patterns that indicate specific failure modes of equipment. Like I mentioned, we're issuing prescriptive insights based off of these patterns, right? This is something that's been done through traditional vibration analysis for decades. What we're doing is applying an artificial intelligence algorithm to it to do that kind of sampling thousands of times over a day. And so in this case, some possible causes for mechanical looseness, right? are potential deterioration of the base, or loose screws in the base, or potential soft foot in the motor, right, where the, where the foot of the motor is starting to bend, or any cracks in the bearing frame, or an incorrect fit between the bearing and the housing, or a shaft, right? And some of the things that we can do from an inspection perspective would be checking the foundation itself, checking the looseness of an asset, checking any bushings or any kind of tightening or fixation, be it the coupling or the motor bolts or the pump base bolts, really anything that's keeping that asset secured to its base. When we looked at this spectrum and we end up looking at the initial RMS data, we don't see anything that initially jumps off the page at us, right? When I look at this RMS data, it's looked relatively consistent throughout its time. What I'm concerned with, actually, is the FFT and the spectral data that we pulled and alerted on to begin with. And that's indicated by this graph here. This graph is what our vibration analysts are looking at and our artificial intelligence is looking at to diagnose specific problems, right? And like I mentioned, as a vibration analyst, I'm looking for specific patterns. For looseness, one of the patterns that we're looking for is a high one times running speed. Running speed would be, in this case, 1770 RPM. If this uh, number here, it should correlate to 717, 770 RPM. And what this means is, is if we have this high one times running speed peak at this moment, it means that we have a looseness problem. And so what we do is take a deeper dive into this data, understand, yes, what is the amplitude of this peak? And that kind of helps us determine the severity, right? At almost a quarter inch a second, that's pretty severe. We need to actually take some intervention relatively quickly. And so when working with the champion at this site, what we did was, is we went out and did an inspection, right? So as each one of these insights come through, they're all gonna come through as pending. Pending means to me that you guys or a customer has not seen an insight. And in inspection would mean that you guys have recognized that there is a problem or recognize that you have seen an insight and are going to go out and do an inspection based off of the information we've provided. And in this case, our champion did exactly that. He realized that there may be a potential issue with the blower and found that there was a potential looseness problem when he went out and did his inspection he was actually able to take a picture of the looseness issue that he found and showed me that there was a missing nut off of this motor. Obviously, like we mentioned, a very obvious uh, indicator that there's a looseness problem, right? And so he mentioned in the comment field of this insight that he found one motor foot bolt loose and one base bolt loose and one base bolt didn't have a nut. This is incredibly important because, as we mentioned, this is going to allow that motor to rock back and forth and exacerbate any potential bearing problems, lubrication problems, and structural issues that is already ongoing. 
our champion is able to do in these insight tabs is let me know that he's issued a work order for this, this issue and can come back up to the top of this insight and change it to an intervention. What this means to me is that this client has recognized that there is a problem from their inspection, have issued a work order to try and correct it, and will be letting us know when that is actually completed. And where, why that's important is because when this work order gets executed, we need to understand when that happens because there is going to be some steps that the client and us need to take to make sure that we adjust our models appropriately. And so when they go out and do that, that work order, they bolt that motor back down. It's securely fastened to its base. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna change this insight to fixed. What this means now is, is yes, we've identified there was a problem, we've corrected the problem, and now we're taking some steps to quantify that problem, right? So it, was there a failure identified? Yes, we identified a failure. Has the issue been fixed? Yes. Was there asset maintenance? Yes, there was. Well, what did we do? We ended up putting a bolt back. We secured that motor back to its base. And when did that happen? Well, it happened on the 13th from around midnight to around nine in the morning. Their night shift took care of this issue. And so when that happens, we need to understand the time period for which you guys are doing maintenance, right? Because we wanna ignore anything that's happening during that window. If someone's banging on a motor with a hammer, we wanna be able to ignore that information because you guys are aware that someone's banging on it with a hammer. We're not trying to alert you when you guys are doing maintenance. We wanna alert you when there's an actual problem. When we are ignoring this information between these two time periods, anytime, any information after this end date will be part of our new health baseline. Because we've done maintenance on this asset, we now have to think about it in a different way. And we need to retrain our sensor based on that maintenance. So this indicates the timestamp for which we need to retrain our sensor. Down here at the bottom, we can also include any savings from the event, right? So any unavailability savings. So if we know the amount of time it would have taken to swap this blower, which our champion estimated at around 12 hours, and we know the cost of the downtime for this asset, which we know to be around $35,000 according to this customer, we can save and quantify that at around $420,000 of avoided cost and avoided downtime, right? We can also include any other savings for like, if you need to potentially rent a crane or bring in some kind of other outside service, like an alignment service. Well, this blower I know happens to be on top of a roof. Well, to get that off, we're gonna need to rent a crane company. And crane companies, as I'm sure you are aware, are not very cheap. Uh, they'd probably be around $7,500 to come out for the day and pull that motor off of the roof for them. So as we can quickly see, the savings here snowball dramatically and we're able to quantify around $427,000 of savings by making sure this motor is bolted down securely and appropriately. And these are the types of insights that within rapid succession of installing sensors are providing extreme ROI to our customers.